Hey fellow creatives! In this video, I'll be sharing five tips to help you paint like Van Gogh. Vincent Van Gogh used a painting method called direct painting to create his masterpieces. This is my attempt at using Van Gogh's techniques. So throughout this video, I'll be referencing this painting to show you exactly what I'm talking about. And if you stay till the end, I'll tell you what I would have done differently to this painting if I were to paint it over again. Timestamps are in the description, so let's get into it. Tip number one is to tint your canvas. What is tinting your canvas? Basically, you don't wanna just be painting on a white canvas. At the end of the painting, you don't want any white shining through whatsoever. So if we want no chance of that happening, we want to put a first layer of paint, probably very thinly in a lot of cases, over the canvas first. For the painting itself, I used oil paint. So to tint your canvas, you could pick a color like, let's say raw umber, and thin out your paint using your solvent, and then just tint that canvas and call it, we call it killing the white. In this case, I actually used black acrylic paint to paint the entire canvas first. I think with the tiny brush strokes like Van Gogh uses, especially since the colors in this technique are not mixed, I think black works really well for tinting your canvas and making that final product pop. Tip number two is do not blend. I know all you blendy blendy people who like to put your colors down and mix all of your colors together. This is not that technique. So when you finish with your palette, after the end of the painting, you should be able to look at your palette and there is there are no colors you have mixed. You are not mixing any colors on your palette at all. You are putting the pure color on the canvas and letting those colors optically mix together. So the way to know if you're doing that is if you're really, really up close to the painting and all you see is these individual brush strokes of pure color, that's good. Whereas when you stand back, your eye should just naturally mix the colors and it should look like a very detailed painting, like you have blended it. So resist that urge to blend. Tip number three is you're gonna use short strokes with a round brush or a filbert brush. These are the two main brushes I used. You can see they're both round brush heads, but the main thing you wanna remember is that you're gonna start with your large brushes and go down to your small brushes. So if you felt like you needed to, you could start with a brush this size and end with a brush this size. Either way, those brush strokes should be very short. We're not using long, flowy brush strokes in this technique. And the reason that a round brush head is very useful is because if you have a square brush head, like this one, and you try to lay down a very fat, juicy brush stroke on your canvas, you might actually end up scraping off more paint than you lay down. Whereas a brush like this applies very light pressure to the canvas because of the shape. So you can lay down those fat, juicy brush strokes that are very opaque and thick like we're wanting. Tip number four is to paint those strokes in the direction or the movement of your subject. So for example, with this fish, these fins have kind of a downward motion. So my brush strokes here are vertical. This fin on the side is flaying out to, is that the right or the left? The left. So I painted these brush strokes in the direction of the fin. Whereas with something like the eyeball, I put in that color using more circular brush strokes in those circular motions. So paint in the direction of the movement and shape of your subject. However, we don't want all of your brush strokes to be the exact same, because that's just gonna create more of a boring painting, right? So we wanna add some texture there. So don't be afraid to kind of switch it up a little bit. Maybe if you're doing sky or something like that, you could try cross hatching and see how that worked. Don't be afraid to just kind of play around with your brush strokes in the different directions and see what looks best. And remember to be stepping back from your canvas when you're assessing that. Tip number five is to use the fat over lean technique. That means you should be laying down your paint thinly at first, and then in later layers, you should be laying down thicker paint and even using your palette knives, maybe. But when you're tinting your canvas, that layer should be pretty thin, right? Especially if you're diluting your oil paint with solvent. In this case, the acrylic paint I used for the background, painting it black, dried really quickly, so it really didn't matter. But when you lay down those first brush strokes, you still wanna be using opaque colors with a technique like this. 
so we don't want to be able to see through the colors. But at the same time, you could use an oil paint thinner like Galkid to thin your paint and make it flow more smoothly. If you've never used Galkid, it is so useful when oil painting. It also makes your paint dry faster. So I will link that down below in the description so you can get your hands on it. Also, if you don't know which of your paints are opaque and which are transparent, I have a free guide that I offer that lists a lot of the common oil paint colors as well as their color temperature. I'll also put that in the description. Something important to remember with this technique is we don't want to do this all at the same time. We don't want to let our colors get too muddy. So if you've been laying down paint for a while and your colors are starting to mix too much on your canvas to where you're just getting, starting to get a blob of brown, that's when you want to stop and wait a day or two and come back to it and put a new layer on. We don't want our colors to mix too much on the canvas. We don't want to end up with a brown blob. So when we get up close, we still want to be able to see those individual paint colors. So doing a painting like this in layers, especially when you're using oil paint, is often the best idea. And don't be afraid to finish off with your palette knives. That would be considered the fattest paint. So save that for last. In this painting, I used my palette knives to create some texture on the scales of the fish. I also used some of this lavender purple color down here, some on the fins, just anything that I wanted to jump out at the viewer and draw attention to. So don't be afraid to use that really thick paint with your palette knives to make the painting really pop. And if you don't want it to take forever to dry, I'll also link cold wax medium down below. You usually do like a half and half ratio cold wax medium to oil paint, mix it together and it should dry pretty fast. And finally, what would I do differently if I were to do this painting over again? Well, I am pretty happy with this painting. At first, I didn't know if I liked it or not because I had never really done this style before, but I did learn a lot through doing this style and practicing it. But something I might try differently, even though I like that the background is flat black, I want to add more texture to it. So I wouldn't necessarily add a lot more color to the background, but I might use oil paint and maybe some palette knives or just some thick juicy brush strokes of maybe ivory black mixed with Prussian blue or like another color like an alizarin crimson and just put those brush strokes that kind of would make it more cohesive with the rest of the painting and how the rest of the brush strokes are laid down. So maybe if the background also had more texture, the painting would seem kind of seamless. I'm not really sure if that would make it better, but that's just an idea I have that I would try next time. Finally, there are a couple of places where I think my paint got a little muddy. So I would kind of stop layers a little sooner next time to make sure that paint didn't get muddy. Other than that, I'm really happy with how this painting turned out, and I hope this video was helpful if you want to recreate a kind of Van Gogh style and use his techniques. Tell me in the comments down below if this was helpful, and I'll see you in my next video.